Good group of kids, amen? You know, singing that song and hearing that choir, and I'm telling you, the choir and praise team, every week they never cease to amaze me, amen, of just what a great job they're doing. I had a brother-in-law, or still have a brother-in-law, he, he's still there, but uh, we used to do revivals together, and uh, he was a music evangelist, and of course I wasn't, and uh, if you heard me sing, you would know why I wasn't. But he used to always joke with me, and he'd say, Harold, you know that when we get to heaven, you're going to be out of a job, and I won't. <laughs> he said, you're not, they're not going to be preaching in heaven. There'll not be any need for it. He said, but we're all going to be singing. I said, you know what? And I won't mind, because I'll be able to sound like that. Amen? <laughs> if I could sound like that, I want to sing all the time. But man, songs like that make me go, oh, I want to sing but they won't let me. But one day in heaven, I'm going to be sounding pretty good. Amen. And so I'm going to get to sing in the choir and I won't have to be the narrator any longer. Amen. <laughs> Com urgent service. That's the title of my message today and even next week. An urgent service. God has called the church into service. We've been connecting all year long. I've been preaching on connecting to serve in 2021. Connecting to God, connecting to the church, and connecting to people in order that we might serve. And then over the last several weeks, I've been now talking to you about what service actually is, what, what it means scripturally to serve, and our part in, uh, as the church in serving. Today what I want to look at is the urgency of our service, urgency, the need for us to serve, the seriousness of our service what God has called us to do my my friends the church has really needs to wake up if you will the church needs to be on on the ball when it comes to our service because again we are living in very urgent times this morning what I want to do is I want to share a message with you out of the book of Acts chapter 1 starting at verse 9 so if you have your Bibles go ahead and turn there what I'm going to be doing today, we're going to be reading a text of Scripture. Jesus, has, of course, has uh, been crucified. He was buried in the tomb. Three days later, he arose from the grave. He's now been going around teaching and uh, preaching and letting people see that the resurrection was real. Jesus, just at the, at the point of us reading, has just finished his discourse. The last words that he's going to say physically on this earth before he comes back and we're going to see that he has just given them the, the great commission if you will to be able to uh, go to all the world and, and basically to have an, a big outreach he told them go out be ready I'm giving you power to go to all the world to be able to share this gospel and so as we look and, and see that we as a church are called to to go out and and why we're going to pick up now in verse 9 where we're going to see the message of the angels to them. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 9. Would you please join us as we read? The Bible says here, Now when he spoke, had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of, the, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in, the, in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, Father, that it will impact our hearts and our lives today. Speak to us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. So what we're seeing here is a call for urgency, a call for urgency to, to go about it in the right great way. As you know that we are spending the whole month of September in doing what I believe God has already called the church to be doing, and that is to have a great outreach, to minister to people, to go out and make connections with people. If in your Sunday school small groups or in your uh, fall, uh, or, or it was summer, but now fall connect groups, in, in our churches, all the activities that we're doing, 
You've been encouraged through the Sunday school to, to go and make contact again with people who were in your Sunday school class or in your activity group that may not have been there for some time to reconnect with them. The outreach explosion is also to go and to, to talk to people who are new, those who are unchurched. Give them the presentation of the gospel. Bring them into your connect group or your small group where they can hear the message of Jesus. Bring them into the church so that they can partake of the great uh, feast that God has prepared for all of us. And I'm, I'm excited about what God is doing. And I pray that your connect group, your small group is, has been doing that. And, and you're beginning to see that connection. Because we're to do it with urgency. Now, urgency, what is it? Urgency is something that's important and requiring swift action. That means to do it quickly. Now, what we've got to understand is it's not the idea of doing it rapidly, going out fast, just running everywhere, doing whatever comes natural. That's not what we're talking about because when a church begins to just do things in a hurriedly way, then we get all messed up and we do the wrong things. What this swiftly means in a swift action is with the idea that you need to do it now, don't put it off. So we are called to go out and to have this great outreach because Jesus is coming again. Okay, let me say that again to, to, to an excited church. Jesus is coming again. And my friends, he's coming and we don't know when. Next week, I'm going to be sharing with you that we have been given some clues as to when. And I'm going to be sharing that next week. But today, we're getting the idea of just saying we have no idea when it's coming. But we see here the angels have given a message. As you see that Jesus had just ascended. The Bible says that when he got up into the clouds that, that, that he was taken up by a cloud. Now I want you to understand it wasn't a cold stormy day with lots of rain coming down. That cloud that he ascended to, that the cloud that took him up was the glory of God. If you would read throughout the whole Bible, every time it refers to God's glory there was a cloud. And so it wasn't that it just happened to be a cumulus cloud hanging over them that all of a sudden Jesus went so high, he went into the cloud. The Bible said that that glory of God came and received him and he vanished from their sight. Now, you got to understand, they had never seen anything like this before. And not only that, they were standing there and this Jesus whom they had seen die on the cross was put in a grave, and their hopes were dashed. Then three days later, they saw him again. They got excited, thinking, okay, this isn't over. This is really good. And they began to spend some time with Jesus. And he taught some more, and he gave them the power. He gave them the clues. He gave them the understanding. But then all of a sudden, out of them not even having any idea what was about to happen, this Jesus, whom all their hope was in, went up and was gone. And they stood there, and the Bible says that they were just amazed. They, they couldn't believe what they were seeing, and they were standing there looking. But then all of a sudden, two angels stood beside them and asked them the question, said, Gentlemen, why is it that you're standing here just staring? Don't you know that this Jesus, whom you've been walking around with, and you saw him being taken up into the cloud this Jesus listen is coming again in that exact same manner how you saw him leave is how he's going to come back so this is what they were saying my friends again Jesus is coming again so you say well, why such an urgency why are you talking about an urgent service my friends listen to me yesterday I conducted two funeral services yesterday in one of them, it was one of the members of our church who had lived a long life but had become ill and had a, a long time of, of slowly passing. And then one day, she, she, she breathed her last. But the other one that I did was a, a younger woman who was just walking around one day fine, but then the next moment, she was breathing no more. She tragically quickly passed away. So you say, why are you bringing that up? Because the fact of the matter is, both of them are now in heaven. Both of them are in glory now. They had no idea when it was going to happen. 
So my friends, listen to me. People today all around us are dying and being separated from God. I praise the Lord that the two that I got to do yesterday, that by, by my knowledge and by my life and experiencing with them, that I heard them and they shared their testimonies with me. I was able to stand before their families and say with confidence that I believe they were in heaven because they both had professed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And praise God for that. Amen. But can I tell you, there are people who are going to, in the next minute, breathe their last breath. And they're going to separate, step from life into an eternity to where I'm telling you, as I shared a few weeks ago, everybody exists for an eternity. Amen? We all are, we all are going to exist for an eternity. The question is, where will we? Will we exist separated from God, or we, will we live eternally with Him? So there are people who are stepping out that we have no idea when they're going to breathe their last. And folks, we've got to get the message to them. But we also just heard the angels declare a message, this Jesus is coming again. He's coming. We don't know when. And so we look at this text and we see basically what they were doing was they were acknowledging a promise that was made. Because you got to understand, this was not the first time that they had ever seen this. And they had been given a promise from Jesus. And the Bible says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the Bible says, For all the promises of God in Him, in Jesus, are yes, and in Him, amen. What that means is every time God speaks a truth, you can mark your word, it's going to happen. It's either already happened or it will happen. No way that what God speaks is going to be kept from happening. So in Jesus, every promise is always made. So as I shared, this is not the first time they had seen this. So it was showing that he was coming again. Because the Bible says in Matthew 14, this is Jesus talking to them prior to this event. When he said to them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are, is, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But now listen to what he said. But I go to prepare a place for you. Amen? He's gone to prepare a place for us. And if he's gone to prepare a place for us, here's his promise. I will come again. I will come back. I'm not leaving you here forever. I will come back and receive you unto myself that where I am there you will be also. So listen, they heard Jesus say that to all of them, to a lot of people. He said, I'm going to prepare a place. I'm coming back. What the angel was doing was just reaffirming what Jesus had already told them. They had heard this before. So they knew it was going to take place. And Jesus had already told them, and his promise was, he's coming again. But not only that, we see it as people here, we can see it promised Three times in the book of Revelation, chapter 22. In Revelation 22, verse 7. And this is Jesus again speaking in Revelation when he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. All right, he says it once. But just for emphasis, he says it a second time. In chapter 22, verse 12, he says, And behold, I am coming quickly. And just in case we don't get it, in case we're wondering, is he really coming back? He says it again in verse 20. He says, surely, he doesn't say behold this time. He says, behold the first time. Hey, I want your attention. The second time, hey, I want your attention. But the third time, he says, now that I've got your attention, I promise you, I guarantee you, I am coming quickly. My friends, when God tells us something three times, I think he wants us to get the attention. Amen? Amen. And he told them that three times in one, verse, one chapter. I am coming. So guess what all of us here, and guess what you at home better begin to start understanding? Amen. Jesus is coming again. Okay, let me say that one more time. All of us here and all of you at home better get in our minds... Jesus is coming again. Much better. 
My friend, he's coming. And that's why we have to have in our service, not just our worship time, but in everything we do, there needs to be a sense of urgency because we don't know when a person's going to breathe their last or we don't know when the trumpet is going to sound and Jesus is coming back. It's a promise that each one of us have been given. And my friends, we need to take it seriously. So not only does it show the, uh, a, a, an acknowledgement of the promise he made, but it also showing us how he will come. He even tells us, hey, this is how it's going to happen. There's going to come a moment when people aren't expecting it. And nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the day. Nobody knows when. But there's coming a point, and in the exact same way that you saw him leave, we're all going to see him come back. He's coming back, my friends, in the air. Amen? His first time of us seeing Jesus is not going to be down here on the earth. The first time we as Christians are going to see Jesus is when we meet him in the air. He said, because that's how he's coming back. So we know he's coming, and we know how he's coming. The third thing is, is that he wants us to understand that we will then be taken up. We who are in him will be taken up. Those who are dead already will be resurrected. Those of us who remain, if we remain long enough, that we'll be taken up. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught where? Caught up together. With him, where? In the clouds to meet him in the air. So we're going to rise up to the glory of God. We're going to meet him in the air. We're not going to meet him down here. We're going to meet him in the air. So we look and we see that in the scripture, they they use the term snatched up was the original term. It was that we would all be snatched up in a moment, in an instant, snatched up to meet him in the air. The Bible also calls it the blessed hope. Paul talks about that blessed hope and that glorious appearing that we're going to see him in the air and then that appearing he's going to come back to the earth and he's going to establish his kingdom. But we see that it's also called the mystery. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, he says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. Quickly, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. He said, that's the promise that I'm going to take you up. We now use the term rapture. The rapture will occur and we will not be staying here on this earth. The Bible says we'll be caught up with him in the air. We'll be taken from this place and we'll be forever with Jesus. And people say, well, now, wait a minute, preacher. That's kind of odd. Something like that has never happened. And I say, well, I beg to differ with you because we look and we see that three times in Scripture, three times in Scripture, this has taken place. The first one was found in the book of Genesis chapter 4, 24 with a man named Enoch. The Bible says in Genesis 24 and also referred to back in the book of Hebrews that Enoch was a righteous man and he walked with God and then he wasn't for God took him. So we we see here that in the Old Testament there was that man named Enoch and the Bible says that one day he was walking and talking and doing his thing. The next minute he wasn't even there. It didn't say that he died like everybody else because, listen, that wouldn't have been worth talking about. Amen? Because there were a lot of people that died. But there was something different about Enoch. The Bible says he was there one minute and the next minute he's gone. It wasn't that they found his body and they said, oh, there's poor Enoch. He passed away. Let's all, let's all go bury him in the ground. The Bible says that Enoch was there one second, but the next second he was gone. He was taken, taken up by God. He said because God took him. All right, we see the second one in in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, the prophet Elijah. 
Elijah was a powerful man. Elisha was his, his second or his, his helper. And Elisha had told him, said, Elijah, I want double your power. And Elijah told him, he said, well, I'm going to be taken away. And if you see me taken away, then you'll receive a double dose of my power. God will give you a double dose. So we see that Elijah was walking around and Elisha kept following him until one moment. The Bible says that Elijah and Elisha were standing there. Then out of nowhere came this chariot of fire and fiery horses, and they drove in between Elijah and Elisha. And the Bible says Elijah was taken up by that chariot in a whirlwind, and he disappeared. He was gone. He was taken up by the power of God to be where God is. And the third one we just read about. He did it to Jesus. He took him up. My friends, listen, if he can do that for one person at a time, I promise you the power of God can take a whole bunch of people at once. And he promised us, I am coming again, and I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the trumpet will sound. And the dead in Christ, those who have given their lives to Jesus, will leave this earth and will be caught up with Jesus in the air. My friends, it's coming. And you say, well, preacher, they've been doing that for, talking about that for hundreds of years. Well, they have been, but let me tell you, we're a hundred years closer than we were then. Amen. We're a whole lot closer than we were then. As a matter of fact, I even got kind of excited because this, this week, as I shared in my Wednesday night Bible study class, I just made the announcement as we were getting ready to leave and dismissing prayer. I said, hey, folks, listen, this Sunday, man, be in prayer because I'm going to start a, a two, two-part message. It's going to be on the urgency, urgency of, of getting the message because Jesus is coming again. Well, I leave from in there, and they all come in here, and we have choir uh, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. So if you want to be a part of the choir, you can come join that. Good, good plug, right, Patrick? That you can come in here. Well, I came in, and as I stood there in the back, Patrick had just finished kind of wrapping up, and I heard him begin to talk to him. And you know what he talked to him about? I had no idea. He had no idea what I just announced. And I heard him talk about urgency. Urgency. Folks, it's urgent that we get the message out. It's urgent that, that we tell people about Jesus. And he began to talk about Jesus coming back. And I was like, whoa! I believe God's serious about this message. He and I didn't walk in there and go, hey, here's what we're going to do. I'll talk about him in there. You go in there and give me a prelude. We had no idea. But man, when I walked in and heard that, I was like, God, I think you're serious. So if you were in the choir... You've now heard it twice. Amen? Jesus is coming. That's why we need to be urgent, because we don't know when. We don't know how long we're going to get to be here. But we've got to be urgent. So what should that do for us as I wrap up here very quickly? What should that do for us? Knowing that Jesus is coming, knowing he could come at any moment, knowing that we could take our last breath at any second, what should that mean for us? Well, the first thing is that it should cause us to examine our eternity. It should cause us, and you at home, should cause us all to stop and say, man, am I ready? Have I truly received Jesus into my life? Have I been faking it? God, reveal to me, do I know you as my Savior? Has there been that moment where I ask you to forgive me of my sin, to come into my heart and to save me, that I could become your righteousness as you become my sin? That I know that now, because of my faith and my trust in Jesus as my Savior, that I am ready to stand before him, that I know that if I were to take my last breath or if I were to hear the trumpet, that I would be caught up in the air because of my faith in Jesus as my Savior. My friends, we need to know that. We don't have a lot of time to play around with it. We don't. I always talk about it. Everybody says, well, I might live to be 90. Well, good. You ask any 90-year-old, how fast did their life go by? And it was fast, amen? I'm 58 years old. I, 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 swear, I swear I'm 28. <laughs> amen? Yeah. I'm 28. I should be. 
or so it feels. Because I know this hadn't been 58 long years. My wife and daughter say I'm 12, but that's a little different than a different story. But I don't care how old you're going to live. My friends, it's fast. It goes by quickly. Jesus said, behold, I come quickly. Just like that. It'll happen. So do we know? Do you know? Do you at home know? The Bible says in 1 John, I write these things that you might know you have eternal life. Not that you have to guess, not that you have to hope, not that you have to think, but that you might know you have eternal life. The second thing it should do is help us consider if our lives are pleasing to him. Because if he comes back right now, where I am in my spiritual life at this moment, this is what I hand to him. Am I happy with where my life is right now that if my Savior who calls me, and the Bible says there's going to come a moment that I'll stand before Christ in his judgment seat to offer up all of my works and all of my actions, whether it was good or bad, would I be okay with saying to him, here's what I offer you? Or are there parts that even right now you might be going, well, most of it I'd be happy, but there's some parts I might right now that I, yeah. Then because we know he's coming back quickly, it ought to encourage us to consider what am I about to offer him? And if I know there's parts of my life that's not pleasing to him, you know what I should do right now? You know what you should do right now? You know what you at home should do right now? Say, God, forgive me and take this from my life. I don't want to offer you this. This is not what I want to give you. I want to be pleasing in your sight. I want to hand you life so that when you look at me, you can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what I want to offer you. You know, we sing, sing in church sometimes the, the song, I am satisfied, and it goes like this. I am satisfied. I am satisfied with Jesus. I am. But the question comes to me as I think of Calvary. Is my master satisfied with me? Is my life pleasing to him right now? Because you have to say, why do you say right now? Because right now he could come back. Right now is what I have. Right now where I am spiritually is what I'm going to offer him. Right now. So it should make us think of that because Jesus is coming again. But the third one should ask, are we reaching out to others like we should? Are we doing outreach like we should, church? Because I'm here to tell you there are people around us that are lost and dying and separated from God. You and I know that. Amen? You know who they are. You know people in your life are. You know that we're walking around and people we may not know, but they don't know Jesus. But we know Jesus is coming again. And we know that what happens to those who are with him, they'll be caught up. We know that those who are not will be left here. Are we doing what we should, knowing all of that, being absolutely sure of all of that? Are we doing what we should with outreach? Are we giving the message of Jesus to people around us? Are they seeing Jesus in our lives today? Are they hearing Jesus, the name of Jesus, come off our lips, but in a positive way? Are we doing that? Because listen, he said to them again, and I wrap up here. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Three times, behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Surely I come quickly. That's what we ought to be thinking, church. Because guess what? Jesus is coming again. He's coming. He's coming. And we need to be ready. But we need to be getting others ready. And I'll ask the praise team to come on back up here as we now step into this time of invitation as we're going to be looking today and saying, God, and the first thing I want you to ask is they're coming up, getting ready to start singing. God Am I ready for eternity? You at home, am I ready for eternity? 
Was there a moment in my life to where I received Jesus as my Savior? Or have I been trusting in my goodness and other things, but am I ready? My friend, if that answer is no, or if that answer is I'm not sure, or if that answer is I hope I am, then I want to encourage you to leave out of here today knowing. I want you to shut this program off knowing that you have Jesus. Not that you hope. Not that you think, do not, do not leave your eternity up for a hope or a maybe, I think. But that you can say, I know. I know that I'm saved. But if you're not this morning, you're not sure, would you say, God, forgive me. I know that I need you today. You died on the cross for me. And I know that my hope is in you. My friend, that's what you need to say today. You at home need to pray that today. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but let me ask you this. Are you ready to offer up what you have right now as your life to say, here it is, Jesus. Here's what I have for you. Or are you saying, ah, well, Pastor, not all of it. Then my question is, what part of it do you need to turn over to him? What part do you need to say, God, forgive me for this. I want to give this to you. This is yours. I want to be pleasing in your sight in my life. Would you pray that? And thirdly, would you say, God, put a fire in my heart so that I can reach people for Jesus, that people could see you in me, that I would have an urgency now, that our church would have an urgency now. Because we don't know when Jesus is coming. Oh, but I believe it's close. But I want people to come to Jesus. More than anything else, I want people to come to Jesus. Would you join me in that prayer right there? Father, hear us today. I pray if there's someone who needs to come to you, Lord, here or watching us, that Father, they'd come to Jesus right now, receiving you into their lives. Father, I pray that if there's things in our lives that we need to give over to you, Lord, we've been holding back. We know we're saved, but there's, there's been aspects of our lives. There's pain, there's hurt, there's, there's selfishness, there's, there's bitterness, whatever it is, Lord, that we would turn over to you, that, Lord, we could offer you today a life that is pleasing to you. But, Father, also that we as a church and we as individuals, Lord, would have a fire burning in our heart, that we as a church would do everything we can to reach one more person for Jesus. Father, we turn it to you now during this invitation time. Lord, whatever is needed to be responded to, that, God, it would happen here now. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're about to do. And thank you for the urgency that you've given us. I'll be down front, or you can come and pray yourself. You at home, call the church. Someone will be there to listen. Hear us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand.